Well, you I come back here to gloat and my great buy. I don't really care. I don't care what you have to say. It's my store. It's my <laughs> my. Les Luger. Les Luger. <laughs> That's the world champion. I'm a bad mother. Being a pimp, wear that. You're a chimp. <laughs> what I found out about this is size matters. But my stake's way oh, bigger wow. than yours. Occasionally, the American Jewelry and Loan Store plays host to customers who are hoping to sell some of the best items ever. And this guy's item is definitely one of them. Well, I hear you guys buy silver. We do. That's a silver surfer. It would have been better if the statue was made of silver. That would have been nice. But it would have been a big issue, too, since the Golds probably wouldn't be able to spend their money on something like that. I want 2000 for it. Actually, Silver Surfer was voted in the top 50 recognizable comic book heroes in America. 2000 seems a bit too much for Ashley, so she tried to bite the price down by a very large margin. I am willing to buy this from you for 500. I'm not going to go below 1000 on this. Give me a second. Take it or leave it. Rather than give him the chance to even it all, Seth made it known that they mean business and gave him two choices only, take the money or leave. Make it a thousand. 900, 900 bucks, that's it. All right, well, it was a pleasure. We're gonna go surfing on home. Seth almost lost the chance of getting the item, but Les, who had been watching with rapt attention, wasn't going to just let the guy leave, so he made his move. You want 950? I'm a, a thou, and I'm perfect, exactly where I want it. If you're going to walk for $50, you're going to pack it back up, you're going to take it back. I'll take Ideal. it. Deal. This customer walked into the store looking to sell off a huge load of purses that he'd purportedly found while cleaning his apartment. So what you got? What do you have? How did you get all this stuff? Cleaning out my place. Did you live with somebody? The craziest thing is that he has a lot of really good stuff mixed in, but he's offering to sell it all for dirt cheap. It's a limited edition, Cherry. Louis Vuitton. Okay. They don't make it no more. It has sold for between $3.99 and four something. And then a genuine, authentic Louis Vuitton. Louis, it's pronounced Lou-E. The customer has proven himself to be very knowledgeable in that field. Even Karen couldn't help but wonder how he managed to become that much of an expert. Where did you find all this information out about these purses? The internet. You're 100% right. This is real. I like her. Yeah, She's I'm a, good. I'm a doctor. Okay. All you guys put you in my will, but right now you ain't gonna get nothing because I'm broke. You must be pretty desperate to sell them off because the amount they've offered is so low, it's almost insulting. 100. 50. 25. 50. Let's kind of stop at that number. How about $72 for everything? Okay. Looking to get enough money to fund her recently deceased grandmother's funeral. Crystal, a customer, brought in a bag of gems she found that had belonged to said grandmother. I'm Crystal. Crystal, very nice to Hi, meet Crystal, you. Hi, Crystal. I'm Ashley. Ashley. How you doing, Ashley? Hi, how are so, you? So, what you got? Um, I have these bag of stones that I found out of my grandmother's house. She just passed not too long ago. Oh, really? Sorry. I'm sorry. I really want to help this girl out. Les was ready to do whatever it takes to get the crystals checked. However, the same couldn't be said of Ashley, who believed the crystals weren't valuable. I have to do what I have to do. Let me have, you know what? My gem expert is coming in this afternoon to look at a few pieces. You know what? If you want to leave these with us, I'll have them take a look. I mean, I'll try to help you as much as we can. Right. You know. I mean, any penny counts. After giving the girl leave to go, Les and Ashley went ahead to meet their jewel expert, who was expected to help them check the jewelry out. So this woman with these stones is coming back. Okay. Do me a favor. Appraise them. Tell me what they are. My dad truly believed that this glass could be something. After observing the set of gems using his microscope. Bob managed to find one of them that turned out to be a hit, and a major one at that. Take okay. a look at this. Holy <laughs> Oh my God. You guys, here she is. We're gonna change this woman's life. She's gonna flip. Yeah. Armed with this new knowledge, they headed off to see the young lady who had arrived in due time to get the result of the verdict that they'd reached. This right here, this is a Burmese ruby. So we'll be able to give you $10,000. The lady couldn't believe how things were going at that moment. Even Ashley forgot how doubtful she had been. <laughs> Why are you crying? 
I can't even imagine. You know, it's not very often that we have a chance to change someone's life. This is exactly why I take time to look at merchandise. After getting into an argument with Seth and Ashley, who were vastly displeased with the car Les had gotten and left stored away for years, Les finally managed to find a couple of buyers who'd be willing to get it. Just interested in what you know about it. It's in really nice condition. The engine's in really good shape. I saw two guys at a Detroit car show. They came into American Julian Loan to see my 41 Chevy. I figured I could come up to 14, but I really wouldn't want to pay any more than that for it. The buyer wasn't going to just bite the first amount that came out of Les's mouth. That would mean he wasn't even going to try at all. But with what he had said, Les still stood a chance at doubling his investment on the car. I'll tell you what, you're at 14, we're at 15, 14, 5, we got a deal. 14 is not horrible, that's a good offer. I'll go 14, 5. 14, 5, you got a deal. You just have to have patience and you can make a great deal. There's Thank the key. you. We'll watch it drive Thank off you. to the sunset. All right. Extremely elated with the fact that he had managed to sell his car off, Les rushed in immediately to share the good news with Ashley and Seth. So let me tell you the great news. I sold that 41 Chevy. Les thought he'd really be getting more of a positive reaction than that. But to his dismay, they actually had very nasty things to say. I'm not oh, impressed. Not... I'm not impressed at all. Do you know how many more you have back there? Who cares? How long has it been sitting back there? Three years. Three years. Oh, my years. God. I you come back here to gloat today. and my great buy, I, I don't really care. I don't care what you have to say. It's my store. It's my mine. Lex Luger was undoubtedly a very huge legend and a sensation in the ring during his time as part of the World Championship Wrestling and the World Wrestling Federation, which has now become the WWE. Growing up, I was a huge wrestling fan. So when I saw Lex Luger was in the store, I was excited. So, so go ahead. Let me you. ask you, how long were you wrestling for? 15 years. 15 years. Yes, sir. 86 to 01. I think I was three-time world champion. Three I went over the immortal Hulk Hogan. Wow. Seth seemed pretty excited to cater to the man. After all, he'd been a huge presence in his childhood. If Les wouldn't have stepped in, who knows what he might have done. Right. See how yeah, the light catches those hands? So each rhinestone, hand sewn. <laughs> and the name in the back. Now, I know that you were probably smaller than I am, but. Oh, hey, absolutely. Les will try yeah. it on. Les Luger. Luger. Les Luger. <laughs> Les, the world champion. I'm a bad mother it seems Les couldn't help but take a shine to this huge collection of items, too. It used to belong to a former title holder, after all. How about 2500 bucks? Oh, wow. What do you think, Michael? Lex, that's your choice, brother. I mean, that's your history. I have to really think about that. Normally, I'd be calling my dad out for being a pushover, but this is for charity and as Lex Luger. It must have been pretty tough for Lex Luger. After all, these were items that reminded him of the good old days. But he had no options, since he needed to raise something for the charity organization. I'm doing this, but I know we had to go. How about 3500 We got a deal. Champ, you got a deal. My brother. Got a deal. Thank right. you. I appreciate Thank you it. Thank you, Lance. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, I personally am very excited. I didn't know what to expect. The Prohibition area was an odd time in U.S. history, as the U.S. government tried to stop the sale and movement of alcohol around the states, all through 1920 till 1933. Although that backfired pretty quickly. How you doing? Hi, how are you? Here I'm Lass. I'm Vito. What is it? It's a prohibition era whiskey bag. You know much about liquor? The full. Hate to let it go, but uh, I got some gas bills. After taking a look around the keg a bit, Les managed to find a very huge error on the exterior that shouldn't be there if it was genuine. First question, if it would have been in prohibition, why would they have put Detroit, Michigan on it? No, no, no. You want 35, last and final offer? Okay. We appreciate it. The deal didn't go as planned, but it seems this man really wants to sell something as he brought up a very unique item that he's got on hand. I also have a, a monkey fur here. Real monkey? Yes. Totally. Monkey fur. Really? Want to wear it? <laughs> Being a pimp? Wear that, you're a chimp. <laughs> That's definitely an odd piece right there. Normally, Les would turn most of the odd things that appear in a store away, but he really was considering getting this one. I'll go sixty dollars for both. Take them off your hands. Take sixty for this. Not interested. Sixty for both. Really? Well, I can't carry both of them, so. If you sold the coat for twenty dollars, you wouldn't have to carry them both out. Les, you got the coat. Thanks, Vito. Come on over here. We'll take care of you. While they were busy trying to acquire the coat, it turns out Ashley was making research of her own, and what she found out was extremely shocking. How much you pay for it? Twenty. So I just looked this up, and they're two thousand used. Really? 
Yeah. So I guess we got a good deal. Yeah, exactly. It's very cool. The customer brings in a van used by euthanasia proponent Jack Kevorkian, also known as Dr. Death, who helped carry out a series of physician-assisted suicide. What the hell is it? This is a 1968 okay. Volkswagen van owned by Dr. Death, Jack Kevorkian. Was an iconic figure in the city of Detroit. Front page national headlines. People from all over the country would come here for physician assisted suicide. Musk couldn't help but wonder how this man had managed to get his hands on the van because this was definitely unexpected. I was high bidder on an internet bidding site. I've got the original title here too. Let's see inside. Sure. And I have everything documented. How so much do you want for this thing? I'm looking to get uh, in the six figures. Agreed. That's a lot of money they're talking about right there, and Les definitely needs to worry about how he's going to get his profits too. But just like the seller said, it is a one-of-a-kind find. This is definitely a piece of Detroit. Right, give me a minute. Let me see something. Okay. You won't find it on the internet. I know. His van's in the back. Did you buy it? Not yet. The guy's got the original title. It's it. I want to see everything. Since it's a huge deal, Les thought it best to rub mines with the gold siblings, hoping they could at least help him reach an answer faster. A little creepy, huh? I think it's cool. There's no question it's cool. How much are you looking for? Six figures. 20 grand? No. 25 grand. Les really wanted the bus, but there's definitely no way he was going to just pour such a huge amount of money on something he hasn't even had properly appraised yet. 30. One time. 50. 30. 30 cash right now. I'm not going to do it. All right. Two guys walked up to Les holding a bottle full of snake wine, which is a very odd sight. This uh -huh. is a cure-all. If a man needs a more vibrant adult life, so to speak, this bottle is the solution. Take a shot of this, you'll, you'll last for weeks. Wow, That's right. weeks. Weeks. Les really seemed sold on their pitch, but he needed to confirm if the wine was worth purchasing first. Let me do a little investigation. Give me one All right, second. sounds good. What I found out about this is size matters. But my steak's way oh, bigger wow. than yours. Since one bottle isn't enough, since Les felt it best to buy their bottle too, but that's only if they're willing to go lower. How about 10? 10? 10 bucks. Ten. No, no way. Would you give me 200 for mine? I think 50. I'll pay you 30. Using them as wine tasters isn't exactly ethical at all. Les will probably get into a whole lot of trouble if anything happens to these guys. <laughs> I just, you know what? It's a very tempting offer. 40 bucks. It, I'm afraid we have to pass. I'm so sorry. I just can't take the shot. Drink it. Why use a chicken? You guys are men. Come on. That's just devious. And with Ashley chipping in, they managed to wear the reservation about the whole endeavor down a bit. All right. OK, ready. Oh, wow. Down the hatch. Here we go. <laughs> oh. Oh. Next up is this episode where a guy and his friend who was entirely covered in paint came into the store to see Les. So tell me about your clothes. Well, this is all happenstance from what I, from what I do. I'm an artist. I do these paintings and um, well, I, I do them live. It's just crazy and hopefully he can really deliver since that's a very sick talent to have. Ready? Ready. On your mark, get set, go. Hey, hey, Two minutes hey, left. Hey, hey, hey. Oh my God. And he really did it, upside down too. There's no way anyone wouldn't be super surprised if they were to see something this awesome. I'll go a couple hundred bucks. Deal for 200. Deal. You got it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I love it. A lot of weird items are bound to come into the store every day, but who could have ever imagined that a customer would actually bring in a jar of dirt? Hey, how you doing? Good, I'm Les. I'm Tim. Tim, so what brings you around here? Authentic graveyard dirt. If you believe in it, it has healing power. The jar of dirt is already surprising as it is, but what makes the whole thing even more surprising is the fact that Les seems to be quite interested in it. I did some research and even just an ounce of graveyard dirt from certain other areas in the United States is like 20 to $25 an ounce. Dennis has always been a passive person, but it seems this whole thing managed to break that facade. It's a jar of supposedly magical dirt after all. How much under $50 are you gonna go? 20 bucks. 
that's it. I can't go no more. 12 bucks. Because 12 is my lucky number. $12. 12 bucks. The dirt might truly be magical or something. Who would have thought Les would be able to secure a customer immediately after he had just bought it? Graveyard dirt. This has been blessed. This is a cure-all. It's a remedy. If you believe, but you got to believe. If you'd like to buy part of it, quarter of it for 25 I think a quarter of it for 25 seems fair. You got a deal. Sellers want huge profits, and buyers wish for huge discounts. This negotiating truth always puts Les at loggerheads with his customers, but not more so than this customer whose ask is kicked into outer space by Les. Got a problem with this guy down there. He talking about he want to take these golf clubs because they spoiling. Because and they're what? Spoiling, I guess that's what they call them. At least 150. I can go 10 bucks. We feel the guy's pain, but sadly, Les is the manager around here, which means that he's gotten the best quote for the clubs. This guy, however, refuses to accept it and Les hands him over to the difficult customer's manager. You're not going to play me like no crackhead. Follow me. Don't touch my golf clubs. Bruh, look at you and look at me. Look at him and look Man, at f him. F you. F you. F you. F you. Give me my money. He didn't know anything about golf clubs. What he did know is how to get thrown out of a pawn shop. A lady enters the store with not only bowling balls, but skills that'll impress a juggler, almost. Too bad Les is not a juggler and can't see how good the lady is. Hey, how you doing, Pops? What's going on? How you doing, baby? How am I doing what? How you doing, Pops? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. Oh, I'm good. I'm gonna be even better, baby. I got three bowling balls for you. They hot and ready. How much I did you that? pay for them? 200, 219. Baby, check them out. They Show in the me book. your receipt. He isn't important. She does realize that if she has any shot at getting her desired 150 bucks, it'll be from Les, right? Let's see what she gets after that exchange. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. I just need $150. That's it. Nothing. You can't do nothing. Nothing. Bitches out the door, you gonna follow right behind. Now, how about that? How about that? How about that? I say you take your balls and get the you out of my on store. Me, listen. Take a deep breath, calm yourself down. Then I could have told you we're not interested in your balls. They be on some bullshit. They don't want to do no business. Oh, shut the f up. Really? The following customer on our list gets offered more than the first two, but they're still unsatisfied. A misread policy and high expectations are a deadly combination, and things get too heated. $100. Okay. I can do the $100. Okay. Let me check it for you. Can I have your ID? Sure. And that's with my 20%, right? The sign right here say I get 20%. Read it. To get 20% more on your items, you need to have an existing loan at another pawn shop, bring me in the ticket, and when you take it out of that pawn shop, I'll give you 20% more than that pawn shop gave you. No one's trying to rip off the dude, but he doesn't get that, which is wild, because which pawn shop will give you money for no reason? Definitely not American Jewelry and Loan. 20% more cash to anybody right. in the city. Right. In the city, right? right. It's the mother right? Right. The way that... give it to me. No, sir. Can I get my money? No, Damn. actually, I'm not even offering you the $100 anymore. Anyway. Oh, for real? Not, yeah, for real. You in that $120. Hey, thank you. Appreciate that. Side. I'll take the sign with me. I'm getting something out this bro. I'm <laughs> you down for the sign, my man. Well, huh, $20 worth right there, bitches. Oh, man. What the plant did to him? One would think that nothing could be worse than a plant murderer, but the next customer shows people in Detroit really detest low quotes. With his attitude, the interview is off to a rocky start. Finally here, you know what I mean? I've been in the land for like two hours, though, you know? We haven't even been open for two hours. We're like an hour and a half. We haven't even been open for an hour and a half. I've been on 11 o'clock. My guys in the front don't mess up. When we quote your price, we quote your price. You're not getting 400, you're getting 110. Okay, well, you can't give me my phone Sign that, and I'll give you your money. That went ugly real quick. Now, Les doesn't welcome threats, especially ones directed at his daughter, and this customer is about to find out. You want, I don't want to talk to you. Don't I would rather talk to you this late. I would rather talk Correct. to you this late. Hold on, what you mean? You don't tell me, okay, with are done. It's one thing if my sister and I get into a disagreement, but when a customer comes in and threatens her, game over. Repercussions, man, I'm gonna have my lawyer come up in here. I'm sending my lawyer up in here to take care of this. How y'all gonna put me up out this month, man? You feel what I'm saying? I know you just doing your job, big dog. When a customer brings in an elephant skull, one would expect Les to say no, because who wants one? Well, it turns out he knows a lot of people who would love to own a white elephant. Skull of an elephant. Really? It's very unusual. It's very unusual. How did you get it? My best friend had it, passed away, and I inherited this one. You know, I mean, we're not really in the elephant skull right? retail business, you know? So what would you take for it? Probably about 15 would be the lowest I'd do it. About 500. Les really is the king of bargaining. 
from 1500 to 500 bucks, that's about a third of the client's ask. Let me talk to my elephant expert. Africans are more expensive than the Asian ones. Mm -hmm. Africans are buying now for 2300 and the Asians are 1900 I'll tell you what, I'll go 650 cash money, right now. 800 even knowing just what the tusk is worth, Les and Seth drive a very hard bargain and the customer eventually caves. How would he feel knowing he could have gotten almost thrice of that online? 700 And if you think it's worth $50 for you to schlep it home, it isn't. Schlep it. It isn't. Schlep it. I'll give it to you for seven. <laughs> you got a deal. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank Come you. right Thank over you. here. We'll Thank take you. care All of right. it. All right. The lady brings in a CPR dummy, and what she's demanding is enough to make Les require resuscitation. Hi, I'm Les. Hi, Trista. Trista, very nice, nice to meet you. Hello. Actually. I have some CPR dummies to sell. So how am I supposed to even know if these are working? Because I am not gonna put my mouth on each one of these dummies. Okay, here we go. Okay, pathway's open. How much are you asking for? Seriously, she's making a deal for CPR dummies? There's no way he's gonna pay that much for dummies. Plus, he might have to give their boyfriend something. That guy spent a lot of time on mouth to mouth. A lot of time. Especially now that this joker drooled all over it. How about 150? How about 100? Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Les. CPR kit, $100 buy. When a man comes in to swap his kid's property for cash, Les makes him an impossible offer. A third of the man's ask, and he does it all with a straight face. Oh, gumball machine. My name is Rock. I got a five foot gumball machine. It was an impulse buy. I ended up buying it for my daughter. How about 100? 50 bucks, we got a deal. Even though it's broke, I'll still buy it. Well, meet me in the middle. 75. 50. This is one of those 50 bucks and not a penny more moments. Now, too bad the customer hasn't figured that out. If he wants the money, he better take it before Les changes his mind. Three and a half. 50, and we got a deal. You know what? Seem like a nice guy. I'll do it for fifty. Great, thank you. You got a hundred dollars? What about seventy-five? Not interested. A hundred. Okay. Yeah. It's one thing to buy at a ridiculously low price, but to sell for double that within seconds, dude, really is the boss. I didn't even get the money yet, and he sold it. Salt in the wound, selling it right in front of me. But Les is a good businessman. A little shrewd, but what are you gonna do? The customer came into the store, hoping to pick out a little gift for herself in celebration of her birthday. That's my son. Oh, yeah, I saw yeah. It's my birthday. I'm yeah, looking for birthday. me a gift. Let me see that. 500. That's a lot. From the way the mother reacted, it was pretty clear her son's input wasn't really appreciated, and she was clearly hoping he'd shut up while she searched through the collection of jewelry. Shut up. Let me see this piece then. Where do you usually go shopping? The mall, actually. The mall? Yeah. Is that where you got those earrings? Yep. How much you spend, spend on those? 500. How much is this one? 800. You spending that much money in a pawn shop, dude. But wait, so you spent 500 on those earrings? Yeah. They're CZs. <laughs> Bull damn that was a mistake swearing in front of his mom like that he's definitely setting himself up for a world to hurt if he keeps it up watch your mouth but that's bull how the hell is he gonna tell me that look i don't know like, who the you think you talking to boo boo but you got me up that's bull you don't talk to me like that now, he was acting all tough earlier but when it really came down to it the guy tried to make a quick escape before he could be more embarrassed by his mom unfortunately for him that failed since he still had to get in the car with her but at least she didn't have to throw a shoe or a slipper i will knock you smooth the f out she was hot who the f is so you what, talking you to who the f is you talking to boo you all f talk to me like that these kids aren't gonna make it. <laughs> Baby girl, hold on. Would you calm down? Calm down. A very irate customer had a lot to say after standing in line for what he felt was close to two hours. A lie Ashley was ready to go all lengths to dispute. You got two, two working. How you doing? I'm finally here, you know what I mean? I've been in the land for like two hours though, you know? We haven't even been open for two hours. It was like an hour and a half. All right, that was just rude, but rather than being combative, the best action to take is to just ignore his rude comments and just get whatever business he came for done with as soon as possible. You get out of here a lot quicker if you decide this. What is this? What is what? This ain't what he told me he was gonna give me. What did he tell you he was gonna give you? Oh, hands. 
400? Yeah. Now, he was probably looking to intimidate Ashley into giving in to his demands, but what he said next was too much, even though Seth knew he had to set him straight. Yeah, see, you the type of motherfucker I've been a caught outside and cracked you upside your motherfucking head. I told you once I don't want to talk to you. Don't I already talked to you this late. I would rather talk to you this late. Hold on, what you mean? You don't tell me. Okay, with tell you. You want to talk to me? You gonna talk to me with some respect? I got more women on the street out here hustling, doing things for me every night, every day. Come on, what's up? Pimp B, man. A pimp? Man, ain't no wonder he can't show an iota of respect when needed. Now, fortunate for him, they tried to get him out of the store rather than to escalate the entire situation. Just don't touch me, because if you touch me, I swear to God, it's going to be some repercussions. Man, I'm having my lawyer come up in here. I'm sending my lawyer up in here to take care of this. How y'all going to put me up off this mother? Man. You feel what I'm saying? After complaining to Seth, Christina managed to get him to switch her and Nicole's station. A switch Nicole wasn't exactly fond of since it meant more work. You having fun? Ma'am. Uh, in my seat? You know what, ma'am? No, I'm not. Get out my seat. Somebody nice She's going to gonna come down there and help you. Come on. Get out my chair. Bye. Beat it. Get out my no, seat. Fighting in front of customers is bad form. Unless who was making rounds immediately tried to intervene since it's his store that they're defacing. What the hell's going on here? Seth told me to switch. <laughs> shut up. Can you shut up? I'm He's talking than to her. me. I'm better than talking her. to me. Seth Seth to me. Shut the hell up. Okay, talking okay, to me. okay. To get everything under control, Les immediately headed over to have a chat with Seth, who had made the bad call that started the whole thing. Switch windows? What the hell are you thinking? Christina asked me, she was dealing with an irate customer. I switched her window to window one. What's the problem? You need to earn window one. Just because Christina's having a bad day doesn't give her the right. That was definitely enough to bruise Seth's ego. And for a second there, he almost forgot that he's just a manager who got the position due to the fact that it's his dad's store. Christina's staying there. Guess what, Seth? Still my store. Seth clearly hasn't learned from his body search idea. When he doesn't work with me, bad things happen your brother's an ass two cheaters walked into the store and from the way they interacted with each other through the whole thing it was pretty clear that they were a disaster waiting to happen hello hi how are you i'm good how are you i'm fine i'm actually looking to pawn these two watches because i'm trying to get the hell out of his house i mean i'm tired yeah. of him after i found out you was the one who was it, cheating it first it don't matter it you matter. still with bitches it doesn't matter anymore so whatever since it's not her job to delve deeper ashley got right to work trying to check the jewelry that they brought in so the problem with the watch is that it's not working and the crystal is broken what about that one uh this one i am not interested in because we don't take this brand you don't take that brand fake no. That's the brand. They probably shouldn't have come together. Maybe that could have helped lessen this huge mess. Because things went completely awry when this woman decided to put her hands on the guy. You never had no life before me. I won't. You never had no life before me. You never had no life before me. Let's go. Let me go. Let's go. Let me go. Get the f off of me. Get off of me. After they caught their head of security stealing, Les and the other golds were on edge. So they kept on making some very drastic decisions to make sure it never happens again. You, of all people, setting people behind his desk? What's wrong with you? Now that was absolutely uncalled for and downright disrespectful. All he did was make Les mad when he should be telling him whatever issue he's got on his mind so they can work it out. Do you understand the position you put us in? You set a new policy. Well, policy was no one is to go behind Jeff's desk. I just watched footage of Bobby J back in Jeff's area. He said you sent him back there. Honestly, it's Les's business, not his. So Les is free to do whatever he wants to as long as it makes sense to him. And then change up whenever you want. It makes you look like you don't know what you're doing. I had an irate customer and I made the call. Oh, Except you know oh. what? Bobby J's a loyal employee. There is no question. So is Joe. Is it just me or is it really weird to see Ashley being the voice of reason in this situation? Shows how wrong the duo actually are. You just did. It's a rule that you're what setting up. I'm talking about. You guys stop yelling. Did you not hear him yelling at me? Do you not see what he's doing around here? In front of all the employees. You two have been at each other's throat since we caught Joe stealing. As expected, Ashley immediately pointed out how out of line Seth was being. Now, all he had to do was talk it out, but he just had to complicate things to fuel his huge ego. And Ashley sure as hell wasn't going to miss a chance to knock him down a couple of pegs. Look, it's time to move on. He's out of our life, he's out of our store, and we're not going to let this happen again to any of us. Period. 
Got it. Got it. This customer stepped into the store hoping to get a sizable sum of money for the gold chain that he brought in. I want to sell this right here. How much time to sell it for? 400. Probably a couple hundred. A couple of hundred. It's worth 400. That's 14K right there. It's more like 10K. Get somebody up here that know what they talking about. Rather than waste her time arguing with this uncouth individual, Christina knew to just have Seth come over to deal with it. He wants 400 to sell it. I thought it would be a couple hundred. 200. That's about right. Nah, man, that's 14K right there. It's worth it's more 10 than carat. This guy was ready to start something, and Seth has never been one to back down from a challenge. I'm saying, if you're feeling that way, man, come on out here and holler at me, man. Come on out here and holler at me, dog. Or what? Or what? Watch it. So, oh, you want to see? What? You're going to see it right now. There you go. I talk, man. Hold up. Hold up, man. Go. With Byron's help, they managed to expel this annoying individual off the premises before he could do any damage. Come on, come on. Come on. Let me go, bro. Let me go, bro. Let me go, bro. What's wrong with you, man? Don't mm -hmm. put your mother hands on me. Bro. An upcoming rapper looking to raise some money for his album decided to drop by the store to pawn some of his jewelry. What you want to do, pawn or sell? I'm trying to pawn it. How much did you want? It took about 20, 25 bucks. Let me get this money so I can get this it's silver. Music. Now, who needs enemies when you got friends like this? The guy he came with kept on trying to stoke the flame of anger in this customer. Okay, so what, what is it worth then? Five dollar loan. Five dollars? Dog, he trying to give you five dollars for that. What is that, a large bro. pizza? What am I supposed to do with five bucks? A mother <laughs> Slurpee with five dollars. Sure you can, and then you can buy her a small Slurpee and you can have three dollars change. Oh. Oh, he just tried to kill you. Bullshit. Since that didn't work out as expected, the guy tried to pull another item up for pawn. His watch. Ten dollars on the watch. Oh my god, dog. I can't believe this, bro. For your watch, bro. For a Breitling. You understand? What, what did I'm you saying? call that? That's the ghetto Breitling. Bless wasn't exactly helping the case with the snide remarks he was making, but still, it was wrong of this customer to call him what he did. There's other places. Go to them. Well, I need. Here's I need. the deal. $15, take it or leave it. Hell no, nah, man. There's the door, guys. See man, you later. Give, me, give me 20. There's the door. Rather than get into a fight with him, Les decided to have him tossed out of the store instead. Oh, oh, oh you gonna call the boys? I huh? didn't call him, and he's not My a boy, man, but, he's a man. Oh, you gotta grab me, though? I grab me. Man, that's some. <laughs> what's up, man? <laughs> you let him disrespect you today, man. <laughs> American jewelry and loan. So give me $5, man. How y'all ladies doing? Can I walk with y'all? So this customer probably doped out of his mind. Since there's no way anybody in their right senses would think to do this, this dude walked over to meet Les to make a very unreasonable demand. Who's the manager? I'm the manager. There's a manager? Uh-huh. So you can help me then. I came in here, I sold a TV. Flat screen is 73 inches. I was wanting uh, 500 for it and gave me 300. If he had an issue with the amount he was offered, he could have spoken out earlier. So barging in and asking for some more money after the deal's been finalized isn't going to cut it at all. You're f***ing me, dude. I mean, I need more money for my TV, dude. You can't help me? I mean, there's nothing I can do. You already took the money. So you can't help me out? You can't make nothing right? Help me. Huh? The only thing this guy's going to get today is a concussion. That's not enough money for what I gave. Since he refused to listen to reason, Byron stepped in immediately to escort him out. Can't you give me something else? Time to go, my man. Can't you give me something else? Watch. Strapped for cash, this customer had no other option than to bring his recently deceased grandmother's jewelry to the store just to get enough to cover rent. My grandma just passed. I'm sorry. So I was, like, hoping to see what I could get for this. So whose ring is this? My grandma's. Now, unfortunately for him, it's a fake. But Ashley wasn't going to give up on him, so she made a little suggestion. Anything else? Because this, unfortunately, is not real. It's not real. What you mean it's not real? Do you have a TV? Um, yeah, I got a TV. OK. But why would I do that if why people not? watch if you need it? Money. I'm trying to do whatever I can to help him. Annoyed by his really rude behavior, Ashley had definitely had enough of the guy. When she thought he was going to take his leave, he did this instead. I'm trying to help you solve like, what your you issue. Mean? What I'm you mean? trying to help you solve like, your this issue. Like, lower your voice. The guy was getting a little too close for comfort, and in the process, he even managed to touch Ashley a bit. Now, Byron wasn't going to let that slide. He moved in to subdue him immediately. 
She ain't by herself, my man. No, I call down, my man. Let's go. Joe makes a simple request to a customer in line. He doesn't expect the theatrics that he gets. The customer goes from 0 to 102 faster than Joe knows how to handle. And that's saying a lot, because he's dealt with all manner of crazy. We're going to drop the white Ford, white Ford conversion van. A white what? White Ford conversion van, that's you? Yeah, that's me. Yeah, you, you got me. You got me when you come from that van. All right, can you get me? Patiently telling you, dude. Ain't no parking spots outside, dog. When they start to scream like that, you know they're going to be a handful, and the dude doesn't disappoint. Okay, well, I'm about to do this now. Don't touch me, man. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Hi. Who is you? I'm Ashley. Nice to meet you. Can we go talk outside? Man, tell your man to get off. Here, walk Don't outside. Don't touch me. Get the f off me, man. I'm not going nowhere. I'm scared. No! 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 Now, this guy literally stopped, dropped, and rolled on the carpet of our store. All right, well. That's a lot of gymnastics because of a touch. Moving on to the next customer on our list, this lady may not be trying to steal Les's carpet, but is surely trying to erode his peace of mind. No, I'm talking to you. You know what? I'm gonna come and show your bitch ass. Yeah, yes, the I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Ma'am? You know what? You know what? Miss, get somebody to help me, please. What do you need help with? I'm need some help with my rings right here. Can you here. take off your rings? Wait, you just walking up on me to my kid, you see my rings, I don't even know who you is. I am Ashley. You go on yelling at someone's store and call them rude? Who does that? Well, this lady apparently, and it's time to go, and of course, the security guard is ready to see her out. I can help you. I don't want you to be the one to help. You want me to help you? I don't walk I up on me. I can help you now. Do not walk up on me. Or else what? Keep walking to find out. No. All right, this. Ma'am? Don't follow me no more. I won't come back in this bitch. All the motherfucking times I've been coming in here giving y'all my motherfucking with rejection sometimes, but this next customer doesn't know how to handle it without assaulting the bearer of the news. Cuz, what's up with this? Give me one second, sir. I'm just looking for a couple of dollars, you know what I'm saying? To be honest, I don't think we're gonna take them, brother. You say what? Damn, y'all ain't trying to look out at all. And then wow. you got cuz. You know right it's here. outdated. You got pops standing behind me. What's up with that? Nothing. You're just causing a scene, so. Y'all about to rush me or something? He might not be getting money for his merchandise, but the dude is eager to get a fine because if he keeps on acting that way, Les might just call the cops. Hey, yo, man, it's carrying my shit out then. Y'all want to do like that? Y'all surrounding me and around this mother. I mean, what's up with that? On that, on that bum ass. This is my right here. How about if we don't step he come back in here? Oh, it's like, it's like that? I don't know. Well, how about that? He isn't the only one who knows how to throw stuff. Next time, he'll act better and maybe get his stuff back at least. The customer really gets under Les's skin because it's pretty rare that he's ever this pissed. I don't care how old I am, I'm never too old to beat your ass. American jury, where the f is the law on it? Tell him carry, carry my shit out, man. We're not taking it out. That's my Look in the dumpster, it'll be there tonight. Nobody likes losing their things in pawn, but this customer takes it to an entirely new level. He is very explicit about his displeasure with the options available due to the store's mix-up. I want my I paid for my to get back. Not nobody else. I don't want nobody. I want my I can give you the money back that you paid to redeem it, or you can just wait a week. He's sending me home with nothing. I'm sorry. Maybe Les should have kept swallowing the customer's attitude because things got chaotic with that comment. It's like watching a bomb go off. Hey, I'm a man, you a sure, man. Don't you me off. I don't give a f who, how many you got with you? I don't give a f you got with you? I don't give a f So what does that mean? I, it means what I said. You a man, I'm a man. Don't be stupid. You a man, you don't, don't be stupid. stupid. I don't give a f I was relieved to have him restrained and out of sight of the rest of my customers. But we still have to get his deal resolved and get him out the door. Customer isn't making this easy at all. It's going to take Les and his staff a little bit of time to live this one down. Whatever I owe you, you're going to get. You don't think I'm supposed to be mad? Well, here's what I can give you. I'll give you 150 bucks. I can let you use a game temporarily. They gave the customer the wrong merchandise. My system has been working for 30 years. Woman comes into the store hoping for a miracle, but unfortunately, the golds don't offer one of those. 
Hi. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm well. I'm here today. I want to pawn my computer. I'm trying to get my son into a technical high school. You head in for 100. But I need 150. I know, but I can't give you 150. Okay, but can you consider the fact that I've been patronizing this business since 97? Ashley's reached the limit of the help that she can render, but that isn't enough for the lady. There's only one type of help left to offer her. Help out of the freaking door. I, well, I don't give I everybody what they want. Well, if you have something a patron where, that's been patron you, since 97. Done? No, I'm not done. Okay. Do you want the 100? No, no, I don't. Okay, then goodbye. I, what the hell are you with your wrinkled eyed ass? You need to go somewhere and get some Botox or some You know what? Wait. Get out. I'm not get getting out, out of here. Work. Get Put out. Me up. The first thing you learn in the store is that you never know what to expect. And this time around, Les has the pleasure of meeting a kid stuck in an adult male's body. Can I get like 400 for this watch right here? It's worth a 20. How much you pay for it? Maybe like seven. You want $10? I don't know. What the do with $10? I have no idea. No level of cajoling will get a penny out of less. And the earlier the customer gets that, the better. But it doesn't look like he gets it, though. 400? No. I'm sorry. This is a bullshit ass place, man. This whole ass place, dog. It's on that tip, dog, man. Y'all, man. It's a bull. Being an employee of American Jewelry isn't easy. Apparently, the show's got the most toxic customers, and it takes a lot of patience and wisdom to deal with them. This man right here is a typical example of what the employees have to deal with every single day. It takes nothing to complain properly, but no, this guy probably thinks that making a scene will make him do what he wants. I got a problem. I got a loan on my wife's ring. Yeah? And when I first started coming here, I got a VIP card. I got more on the loan. Now you guys put me to a gold card and I get nothing out of it. You think this is funny? I don't think it's funny. I think that there's something wrong when you start hitting your head against the side of the window. You know, for talking a bunch of dude, as small as you are. Seth is sassy, and he's got the right attitude for customers. This man came all the way from his house to intimidate Seth. Now the focus is not on Seth, but on Big Joe. Big Joe's one of the beta security guards in the show. He literally comes in at the right time. How he manages to be polite and also push the customer out at the same time is impressive. That crazy customer came in thinking he was built tough. Well, Big Joe must have made him rethink that. Oh, you're an idiot. What are you going to do about it? I'm not going to do anything about it. What are you going to do about it? I am not going to do anything about, about it. it. My man, have a good day, my man. Really? Have a good day, sir. Yeah, have a good day. Yeah. Big man? Yeah. I don't think so. Have a good day, good day. Hell no, this now, this is a pawn shop that is strictly business, but this lady clearly doesn't understand that. What she needs right now is a relationship therapist and to not bug Ashley with her pathetic love story. The first thing she needs to adjust is her attitude. For somebody who's desperate to get her baby daddy out of jail, she can definitely do better than that. Um, I was coming in to try and get like 1500 for this. Okay. I'm trying to get my baby daddy out of jail, and I've been really trying to work things out with us. Okay, I can help you, but not for that much. Yes, for that much. This bag All is right. worth at least a good 4000 by itself. This, one, this one's a good one. Here comes Big Joe. He knows the perfect time to show up. This is a general pawn shop, and if she thinks those baseball cards are worth more, then she could head over to a store that specifically deals on baseball stuff. The only good thing about this episode is how the lady caught her cards perfectly. Big Joe wants to give this lady a hug since she's sad, but that isn't what she wants at all. I said hey, I want 1500 I'm not giving you $1,500. $1,500. I am not no. giving you $1,500. No, 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 no. Yes, I want $1,500. Let's play some sports. $100. Bring me my money. Let me get a hug. No, don't give me no damn hug. Oh, you need a hug. I don't me. I don't want no help you. It's not every day that we see customers who want something costlier. Now, if he thought this watch was beautiful, he should have just bought it. Maybe the price is below his class. Finally, Mr. Bugatti has seen what he likes. Hi, how are you? Looking for a watch, a nice watch. You know what I'm playing? Sure. Which one? That one right there. This one. Yes, ma'am. Hey. That is sharp. Can I try it on? It's real nice right here. I think I could look good when I go out with this. That one's sharp. How much is this one right here? $5.99. Oh, no. Oh, no, baby. Do you want a mirror? Bugatti, when Bugatti go out, 
He got to look right. The moment the man brought out the money and tried to explain, we knew things weren't going to turn out well. It's either this dude's from centuries ago when $2 bills could be worth a lot, or he's just gone nuts. Now, he even wants change. But at least $2 two centuries ago is not worth $2,000 today. Big Joe could have stayed a little so we could keep on watching the drama. It's worth a lot of money, so this, I should get some change back. It's a $2 bill. Okay, and it's worth $2,000. It's rare to find a $2 bill that got red in it. You know what? Yes. I'm gonna tell you something. Okay. You owe bologna sandwich. Y'all ain't got no money. Okay. You know what I'm have a good day. Big Mouth. Big Mouth is hungry. <laughs> this employee was nice and polite to the customer. Now, he did nothing to trigger the guy at all. 20 bucks is good for that old looking thing. Now, he doesn't even have a clue what he's with. He probably stole it or something. Now, he says he needs his money as if he's entitled to it from the pawn shop. Uh, yeah, man, I'm trying to see how much I can get for this. I'm trying to get like, I'm trying to get at least a hundred for it. A hundred dollars? Yeah. I won't even be able to sell it for near that. I paid like $200 for it, though. Do you know how many I'm sitting on the back? Do you know what it is? It don't matter how many you sitting on sure, in the back. because then I can't sure. sell them. I need my money. I I'm understand. Need at least a hundred dollars for this. Then yeah, take your <laughs> out of here. How about one zero zero? You can give me what the <laughs> I earned. Twenty dollars? What the I'm gonna do with twenty dollars? I don't know. Huh? The worst mistake this guy ever made was to hit less. Joe is usually soft when taking the customers away, but that wasn't the case this time. Nobody messes with the boss at all. This customer got less enraged, and now Seth and Ashley will bear the consequences. You calling them? Really, mother? I got this. I got it. You want to give me more than twenty dollars? Get out. Time to go. You. I've been waiting for an hour. Really? I got a guy out there screaming and yelling at me because was that of something, something that new? you did. Your system does not work, Seth. I've been watching this go down all day. Nothing is as annoying as when customers act like they're entitled to money from the pawn shop. This isn't the government, this is a business. Now what happened to talking nicely and respectfully? Instead of looking for common ground, the man keeps raising the price. What are you looking to do? I'm looking to get some money for it, man. I'd like to get, and I'm going to get, about 50 or 60 bucks can't walk out of here without it. I'm I'm broke. I'm hurting. At least 60 bucks, please, man. Wasn't he just at 40? Yeah, we'll just keep on going up and up and up. <laughs> I started thinking, this guy is dangerous. And it was that statement that sealed the customer's fate. Les gives this man the chance to take his jacket and get out of the building with his nasty attitude. But it looks like he wants some trouble. It's heartwarming to see how all the guards come in to protect Les. Les is both bad and good employees, but we know for sure that his guards are his best ones. Here you go, sir. Yes, I am. Not as much as me, though, brother. Give me you wouldn't for have it, a man. clue how nutty I can be. I'm the craziest mother you ever saw in your life. <sighs> but so what if I jump at you? Oh, you don't want to do that, man. See that big gun this mother got? Thank you. I offered him 10 bucks for the jacket at first. I offered him 20. Yeah. Push comes to shove, I'm going to be doing the pushing. It was reasonable for Ashley to suspect that the laptop was stolen. Does she mean she didn't even try to check whether the laptop was in good condition before bringing it in? So look who's talking about having a bad attitude. First of all, these customers come in with touching stories, but along the line, their attitudes give them away. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I like your nail polish colors. Thank you. What do we got here? A laptop. Uh, laptop. Can you type in your password? There you go. Perfect. And how much did you want to get on this today? At least 165. I can do 150. Hey, Learn how to coming. talk. Learn how to talk. Learn how to talk. Have a good day. You were too silly. Ashley does deserve accolades for her patience, though. Dealing with people like this every day is incredibly draining. So even though this is her family business, she still deserves praise for giving it her all. Excuse me, sweetheart. Are you a lady? I am a grown or are you, ass well, you're not woman. acting like one. I am a grown ass woman. You're not acting Flat like out. one. Like I said, like I am a grown ass woman. You're not acting like one. What the f you looking at? What the f you looking at? Don't touch me. What the f you looking at? Don't touch me, you stupid bitch. You, you don't know me, bitch. You looking at me? If you want to do something, do something. We get folks of all kind. Since everything's in the system and the customers will get a receipt, it's no one's fault that this lady doesn't remember the transaction she had. The employee tried to explain things to her, but she just wasn't having it. In my, I had a beat maker. I don't have my ticket, but I do got my license. Are you 
don't have anything in pawn with us, you sold the items. They sold my Where's your ticket? I don't have a ticket. When you sold us the merchandise, you got a ticket. No, I so lost where is it. it. You lost it? Yeah. I need my Show me the ticket. I the don't ticket have my ticket. That's what I'm telling you. I right. lost my ticket. Well, there's nothing I can do for you. When Les takes things into his own hands, things always get interesting. He literally took over from Big Joe. Okay, so I just make a phone call. A little my phone call? My brother be up here to handle y'all, mother No, ma'am, 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 you have to leave. I'm not leaving. Leave. Ma'am, come with me. Back up, And get ready if anybody comes and approaches us. Hey, you, better, you better be ready. For what? Because my brother be don't ready come up here and, and handle your what? ass. I'm not going nowhere. I'm not going nowhere. I'm not going nowhere. Leaving this woman was not the only thing her ex-husband did. He also gave her a fake ring, and she just couldn't handle that fact very well. How long were you married? 13 years. Wow. Okay. Anyway, so I need some cash. Okay. He gave me this ring, and I want to see how much I can get for it. It's going to be under 1000 Under 1000 Yes, ma'am. Why? Well, because you have a little chip on the side of your stone. Come on, let's just go somewhere else. No, he don't know a damn thing. Poor woman. No husband. You want to try to hustle me. He's going to think I'm stupid. Byron the Snuggle Bus has a job waiting for the woman's son if he ever wants to be a security guard for the pawn shop. He did impressive work with his mom. You want to get him before I get him? Yeah, mom, let's go. Let's just, let's Wait, go. Let's I'm go not going. Yeah, He's just stopping me. Hey, what? 